What's to you guys? It's your girl, Naja Latrice, back with another video. So as you can tell by the title of this video, we are going to be going more in depth about renting from an apartment complex and renting from an actual owner, which is also known as for rent by owner. Um, now, if you haven't seen my last video, um, I kind of talked about things to take into consideration when you are moving out or moving in general into an apartment or whatever the case may have you. So I'll make sure I put it up at the top so that you can go off and go check that out as well because I give a lot of helpful tips. And so I did speak on this a little bit in that video. And so I wanted to take the time to make a quick video. It's not gonna be too long, just to elaborate on exactly what I meant and what I was saying in that video about the differences, okay? so. Before we get into the video, make sure that you all go ahead and subscribe to my channel, turn on your post notification bell so that you are notified whenever I upload, and also like drop down some suggestions in the comments of some things that y'all want to see, some content, because y'all like, you know, making content for YouTube is, is extremely difficult sometimes. Like, even though it's boring as hell, we're quarantined in, I think they're about to lift it, but it's just boring. I should be able to think of more things, but unfortunately, I'm not that gifted. So here we are. Um, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so if you see me looking down, I wrote down um, the things that I wanna talk about on a sheet of paper in my note, my YouTube notebook. Um, so I promise I'm not like, you know, distracted or anything like that. So first we're gonna talk about and the basic, which is like the apartment complex, our normal apartment complex, okay? So the first things first, we're gonna list the pros and the cons for each one. So the pros we're gonna start with as far as an apartment complex. The first thing is on-site leasing. What that means is that you can randomly get up one day, drive to the neighborhood, walk into the leasing office as long as it's during their business hours, you can talk to them about the property, more than more, nine times out of ten, if they have a model available, they will go ahead and show you the model, uh, show you the amenities and all of that good stuff. Like you just kind of, after you go look every everything online, it's always good to go in person just so you can see because we know that they be lying, honey. Excuse me. We know that they be lying on these websites. So this is so you can go, you can speak to somebody, get all the information that you need. Um, also, it's really good as far as... Um, pricings and things because a lot of websites if you go on um go online they have like ranges and so sometimes it'd be like oh a one bedroom one bath from 800 to 1300 dollars and that's kind of steep so um some of them are upgraded some of them aren't upgraded so that's just really giving you a general idea um you can actually physically see with with your own two eyes um what the what the difference is and why it's such a drastic price difference um with their different one bedrooms or whatever the case may have you um and it's just like i said it's just easier it's always it's all easier it's always more convenient to be able to have somebody to talk to now the second thing that i wanted to notate is it kind of has for the most part has a simple application process um you literally just go online usually they have like a portal um you fill out the application it does like the credit check the background check all of the other stuff and then you're good. You pay your one fee, your fee for the application. Oh, I just spit. Oh my God, it was rude. You pay your um, your fee for the application. Um, you pay, pay whatever other fees are associate, associated with it. And then you keep it moving. It's usually not a long process. I've seen some cases where you can get approved same day. It could take a couple days for your stuff to come back. It's a lot of different factors. Of course, that's not the apartment complex's fault, but... Like I said, usually nine times out of 10, it's a simple application process. As long as you meet the requirements and you don't have anything fishy or anything on your credit, then you should be good. I am back y'all, sorry about that. My mommy called me, so when the queen calls, you know I have to answer. Um, all right, so where did I leave off? Um, so yes, simple application process. As long as you meet all of the requirements, this pillow looks extremely weird. As long as you meet all of the requirements, then you should be fine. Now, um, the last thing that I have, and I'm, it's probably plenty more of pros and stuff for each one of these, but again, I didn't want this to be a really long drawn out video. This is just like stuff that you probably won't even think about. Um, but the last thing on my pros list for apartment complex is flexibility when it comes to units being 
available and that may sound really weird now but once i get into the for rent by owner then you'll understand what i mean by that so basically um as you know an apartment complex there's a thousand it's like different buildings different apartments or whatever the case may have you um so it's constantly you know rotating and they have you know apartments over here third floor second floor first floor um this building that building whatever the case may have you it's just usually a lot more flexible with trying to get in um unless it's like a income restricted or income based apartment where the rent is significantly cheap and those people do not like moving out honey they will renew their release renew their lease renew their lease renew their lease until they cannot renew anymore but that's all another story for a whole another day but other than that like i said it's just flexibility when it comes to um available units please don't pay attention to my nails yeah i can't get my nails done yeah so now um I only have two cons for the apartment complex. Um, one, I am sorry if y'all see like all of these breakouts. I am having a horrible rea re um, allergic reaction. All right, so the first con is there is no way around the application. The application usually for apartment complexes because they um do they usually have a corporate office that they have to answer to, and so literally everything is cut and dry. If you have to make this much money, you have to make this much money. If your credit has to be at this, it has to be at this, and so on and so forth. Like it's really black and white, straight to the point, and there's really no wiggle room around it if you know what i'm saying you're weak in one area but strong in another and again and it make more sense once i get into the for rent by owner so that you can kind of see exactly what i'm talking about and then the second one which may not be an issue to some people and it may be an issue for others is um constant supervision during business hours um and so what that what that means basically is that being that you have people on site, you always have like, you know, the um the leasing agents walking around. Um if you're not in a super big community, they probably know every tenant everybody that's in the whole apartment complex which i guess it makes it very personable depending on them as individuals. Um however, sometimes it could be kind of aggravating on the opposite end, it could be aggravating if y'all don't have the best relationship. They'll call you by name. They're always like trying to figure out if they think something fishy is going on or if they just think you're suspect. Like any given reason. It could be like you probably didn't even do anything wrong. You could just be, you know, like young and, and African-American and they could find a problem with that. So it's just a lot. Like it's just a little too much. I personally like my privacy. <laughs> I don't really be having time for all of that. So that can be um, a very big downside to it, just depending on your personnel and, again, the other party who you're interacting with. So that was really cut and dry. That's a part of basic leasing through apartment complexes. It's really the simplest option, to be honest. If I were you, your first time renting, I would definitely say just go directly through an apartment complex because for rent by owner which we're about to get into can be a lot it can definitely be a lot so let's go ahead and get into for rent by owner now the first pro that i have down is the flexible application process sometimes this is not in every case and this is for this whole video this is not for every case this is just my experience um i've rented a few properties <laughs> As of right now um so with that being said like i'm kind of knowledgeable i have a lot of wisdom when it comes to it um so when i say by flexible application process um it's really about money leverage so when it comes to first and first let's back it up for rent by owner it's basically um you have condos townhomes and sing single family homes or even like duplexes where it is owned by a specific person and not a corporation okay so basically it's like me or you we go and buy what we call investment real estate investment properties we fix it up all of that good stuff and we rent it out in order to number one take care of the monthly mortgage on that property plus so that we could get a little bit of money into our pockets that's basically what that is so when it comes to that the reason why you know sometimes it is better because you're not dealing with um 
you're not dealing with number one a whole bunch of different people you know because you know if you may call if you're dealing with an apartment complex you can call the leasing office at eight and talk to karen and then call back at 12 karen on lunch and now you got to talk to john and they haven't discussed anything so now you got to repeat yourself and all of that opposed to for rent by owner where you're literally dealing with one person one person now before i even continue let me say this as i almost forgot about it most for rent by owner people do not get it do not like getting their hands dirty and what i mean by that is that they don't personally personally want anything to do with the tenant at all whatsoever because it is a lot like being a owner of something i can just imagine like it is a lot it's a lot so what they do is they hire what we call management property property managers um which is a business it's like a third party they're kind of in the middle between they're the middleman between you and the owner and they handle everything so when it comes to postings when it comes to communication when it comes to maintenance when it comes to any of that all of that will be through them and you probably won't even know who the owner is all of the for rent um, for rent by owner properties that I have rented from, I never knew who the owners were, like at all. The only time that, excuse me, the only time that you'll probably find out who they are is if something happens and there's some type of legal issue and y'all have to go to court and then you figure out their real name because y'all have to go see a judge or whatever the case may have you. Other than that, you don't know. Not something to say. You probably won't know who the owner is. Um. But when it comes to the application process, it is, to me, sometimes can be a little bit easier. And here's why. When it comes to apartment complexes, um, they, the, it, it doesn't matter. Like, they're just renting out apartments. You know, it doesn't have any, it's, it's a big corporation. So, it, whether it's vacant or whether it's, you know, taken up, they can care less. You know, they still making their money because they got a thousand other tenants in their apartment complex. When it comes to a for, um, uh, for rent by owner, sometimes they only have that one unit, that one uh, apartment or one condo, one townhouse, one um, townhome, one single family home. So with that being said, they are very strategic and um, very st strategic when it comes to renting out that space. Number one, you anytime that an apartment is vacant, they are not making money. Period. So again, we're just looking at it if they own one place. Most most time most times they own multiple, but you would never know. So let's say they're focused on this one property. As long as they have a tenant in that property, they're going to get paid because you're paying rent, you're paying this, whatever the case may have you. So with that being said, there it's a lot easier to bargain um, with a for rent by owner property. And when I say bargain, I mean like, let's say they run your credit and they look at your income, right? Your credit may not be that great, but your income is amazing. And so with that being said, they're like, hmm, well, they make money. They can afford it. So we're just going to go ahead and approve it. And we'll just probably make them pay a little bit more for the security deposit just in case something happens, you know, because obviously there's a reason why you have piss poor credit, you know. Um, or let's say that you have great credit, but your income is like, eh, you can afford it, but it may not be the best. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you'll be like, okay, looking at their credit, they look really responsible. It looks like they're paying the bills on time. It looks like they're taking their credit seriously. So we're just going to go ahead and approve them. You know what I'm saying? And what we'll do is we'll just have them, again, pay a little bit extra move in for that security deposit just so both so that we're protected. Okay? Um, now, when it comes to the for rent by owner on the other scale of it, remember I told you, let's just think of it as if this is their only unit, right? It does get kind of difficult because nine times out of 10, when it comes to for rent by owner, you'll find it on like Zillow or something, not like apartments.com, but like Zillow or like Craigslist or whatever the case may have you. And so say if you see a unit, right? And you're absolutely in love with it. Like you love it is beautiful it's everything you could have wanted in an apartment right and then you go to inquire about it and they say oh dang a tenant just signed their their lease for it today there's only one of those units it's not like you can go down the hall and find. i mean you can but that may not that may not be owned by them it may be owned by a completely different owner a completely different um property management group would be over it and so with that being said now who knows when you'll be able to get in contact with them or who knows if you'll be ever be able to even get in contact with them maybe it's not for rent right now you know it's just a lot of different factors that goes into that and so again like 
that's kind of a pro and a con at the same time because every like in i've stayed in two of the complexes that i've stayed in were for rent by owner every apartment looked different inside like on the outside obviously it looks the same but on the inside you know some owners put a little bit more work a little bit more pride into their um complex i mean into their apartment so you know you'll get the granite countertops you'll get the vinyl floors or whatever the case may have you i'm um, opposed to some that just gives you the basics white refrigerator white stove towel floor i'm sorry y'all it's like when one parent calls me the other one is like shortly after honey love them to death but here we go so don't really remember where I um, left off at, I think we were just kind of wrapping up a flexible application process. Oh, money leverage and um, all of that good stuff. So this kind of ties into the application process. Um, this is kind of, dang, I'm trying to see. Okay, so let's, we're gonna talk about upkeep, okay? And it's gonna kind of lead me into the cons in a sense. Um, now, when I say upkeep, Sometimes when you are um, doing for rent by owner, so again, that's condos, single family homes, town homes, all of that good stuff, they have a HOA. And what that is, is the homeowner association. So that means you would have, like, you have your person who owns the actual um, unit, right? And then you have a separate corporation that is over the entire complex, right? Because technically, I, and I could be wrong, but I believe that the H people that's over the HOA, that's over the actual complex, they're kind of responsible for like the safety of everybody else that lives there. And because it's for rent by owner, of course, that could be extremely difficult um, because you don't know all of the tenants if they're just doing an application process through the owner, you know what I'm saying, for the specific unit. So, nine times out of ten, you will probably have to complete a second application, which is the HOA application, right? And for them, it's not like income. They don't care about your income. They don't care about your credit. They don't care about any of that because you're not paying them. But they do care about your criminal record, um, your, your background. So, make sure you're not like a registered sex offender or anything like that. You're not a felon. Um, convicted felon or whatever the case may have you so that is usually a separate application which means that is more money um like i said for the two properties that i stayed in that was for rent by owner i did have to do that both times so i applied for the actual unit and then i had to actually get approved to live in the actual complex by the hoa if that makes sense okay so Again, like that can be, I mean, the pro of it is because usually when they have the HOA, usually the complex, the subdivision is extremely upkept. They have people there all the time doing like landscaping and keeping the pool clean and all of that other stuff opposed to, I mean, depending on um, what complex you live in, sometimes, you know, it could just be a little run down. They'll come and fix things here and there. They be having maintenance on site just for like maintenance emergencies. They don't really be like pouring back into it. But not usually when they have like a the HOA in place, they're the ones who are responsible for like, you know, the upkeep of the neighborhood and things like that. So that's definitely a pro. All right. Now we're going to get into our cons. So the first one, we already just touched on it, the extra HOA, um, extra application. I feel like it's just like, what the freak? If I already paid $100 for my unit application, then I have to turn around and pay $100 for an HOA application. Like it is, a, it just, it's so unnecessary to me in my personal opinion. Um, on um, top of the extra HOA application, there is usually extra money involved when it comes to the amenities. And what do I mean by that? So when it's for rent by owner, um, when you're renting from the owner, the only thing that you're technically renting is that unit, okay? Everything else don't have nothing to do with the owner, has everything to do with the HOA. So if you're in a gated community, nine times out of 10, you have to pay extra money to get a, key, a gate key to that gate so you can be able to get in and out, okay? You've got to pay that to the HOA. Um, also sometimes they have a separate key, which you do have to pay for, for, to access the amenities. So if they have an on-site pool, if they have a gym, if they have a, whatever the case may have you, you usually have to pay an additional to get the keys for those amenities. There's a not, that's not included into your rent or anything. Of course it is a one-time fee. Once you have the key, you have the key and you return it whenever you move out, but it sometimes can really be an inconvenience. This particular, um, where I live at now, this is actually my first 
yeah this is my first um complex that i lived in where it was just through the apartment i didn't it's not for rent by owner or anything like that and my key goes to everything all of my amenities i have access to we have a dog spa we have a pool we have a gym we have a cave we have like a hammocks area like everything and i have access to it with just my regular key so that for me has always been a bummer i absolutely hate it i feel like it's just so unnecessary um i've had to pay for mailbox keys one time i've had like it's just so it's so much and it's so unnecessary you guys i absolutely hate it but I guess you know it is what it is um now con nobody on site nobody on site and office location basically tie hand in hand now if the whole complex is um let me see like for rent by owner i guess it really it honestly really depends so for example my first complex that i had um again it was for rent by owner so i went through a particular um, management property um property management in order for anything that i needed any maintenance any any of that however they did have a office on site not my management people but the actual complex i believe it was called the nation so they had people that actually work that kind of help facilitate like the maintenance around like the landscaping they were like basically the hoa so they were there but they weren't really able to help me with shit just being real you know anytime i had any major concerns it wasn't a concern because they like okay we're just here for like the complex in general if you have specific issues you need to speak to the owner of your property um so that's kind of a bummer my second place that i moved into when i had my townhouse there was nobody on site whatsoever there was no office space there was no none of that everything was strictly all communication was strictly through um the owner and um for so i had my manage the property managers they had an office and then if i when i had to go get my gate key to be able to get in and out of my gate to get my parking sticker keys for the pool and all of that i had to go to the HOA's office which is in a whole nother location so it was inconvenient and I really do not like that it is so aggravating like it's so 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 aggravating granted like here where I live now it's a lot better because again uh, it's an actual apartment complex I can go down to the leasing office and speak to them talk to them get whatever I need to get from them whatever the case may have you without it being an issue as long as it's during normal business hours but when it's for rent by owner they are not on site you have to kind of you know talk to them from afar everything is like electronic through a portal and all of that other stuff now office location is really really big i kind of touched on that in the last um video about the whole apartment searching and all that good stuff and this is kind of important because you never know what could possibly happen so my first apartment complex um Oh, this should be a story time of how they tried to, they, they did scam me. Um, basically long story short, there was an issue that happened with the rent and they, um, they were not even, they weren't allowing us to make payments online anymore. Right. So anytime that it was time, the rent is due on the first of the month, every month. So their office was, I, I was living in Orlando. Their office was all the way in Lake Mary. Now for me, it is inconvenient AF. It's hell. Like, it's so inconvenient because not only did they their office all the way in Lake Mary, but on top of that, they did not have a drop box. So if, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I needed to drop off my rent, I work. So their office hours are my office hours. They work, they, they're open 8 to 5. I work 8 to 5. So if I have to bring y'all a money order, y'all are y'all are closed. How I'm supposed to do that? I usually have, y'all, I dead ass used to have to like fold my money orders, record myself sticking it into their door so they can complain like they didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like just to pay my rent. Like that was so unnecessary to me. It was foolery. Like if you're going to have an off, uh, off site leasing office or whatever the case may have you, nigga, at least like have a drop box so that we can do what we need to do. And I ain't got to sit over here and wait on y'all. You know, like then they had the audacity to be closed Saturdays and Sundays. Like what? It just didn't make sense to me. And so be very mindful. For me personally, and I don't know if this is like scientifically proven, but from my personal experience, I don't never get, things don't never get done when I need them to get done unless I'm in person. As long as I'm calling you over the phone, they like to lollygag, they like to take their time with what I need as if I'm not paying rent there every month and I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't have time for it. Like, no, because I pay my money and I, I stay in nice apartments. So we ain't talking about $400 for rent either. Four, five hundred of my rent ain't never been 
been that low. So with that being said, like I want, it gets aggravating. Like when you have to physically take time out of your day, you have to like sometimes take off of work. Like I'm going to take that first half of the day so I can go handle this because they playing with me. Like it's just, it's, it can become very inconvenient. And I just personally, it just, it'd be a little bit too much. So that's that. Um, and the last con that I have on here for, for run by owner is the basically the contract terms and conditions. And what I mean is like the leasing agreement. When it is for rent by owner, of course, yes, every state has their rules and regulations of what you can and cannot do as an owner, period. There's 101 things that you can and cannot do by, by the state of law, you know what I'm saying, as a tenant. However, there are a lot of things that you can, as an owner, it's your house that you can control. Like there's a lot of things and the list goes on. You have to really look into it. So when you, when it comes to for rent by owner, please make sure that before you sign your lease agreement, you go through it with a fine tooth comb because sometimes they will, y'all, they will put some things in your lease agreement and you don't know nothing about it. And then once you sign on that dotted line, it is locked in forever. And that's just what that is. And you cannot sit here and say, well, I didn't know that. Or I didn't see that. They're going to look at you like, oh, is that right? Well, maybe if you would have read before you signed, we wouldn't be having this issue. So make sure before you sign your lease agreement, you look over it. If you know somebody that maybe knows a little bit more, like your parents or something, go to them. Go to a friend. If you can afford it, go to somebody legal, uh, like a legal counsel. Have them look over it. Make sure it's nothing fishy in there. And make sure that you are like print off to like you, nine times out of ten it's usually online when they do it. Print it off, highlight things that are that you want to ask some questions about. You know, like it's just so much. Like even something as simple as like entry to your apartment. You know, sometimes they'll be like, okay, we have to give you at least seventy two hours notice before we can just enter your apartment with our key. You know what I'm saying? Like some of them be like, we, you don't have we don't have to ask for permission. Like we could just enter into your apartment and that's just like so it's just a lot. It's a lot that you need to look over and it gets kind of scary because some owners do take advantage of tenants. Um and it actually is really really sad and even with that as well, um another thing that could be a con, I completely forgot about this, but um uh, I do want to touch on this. Sometimes because it is it's very it's very case by case when it comes to for rent by owner. You know what I'm saying? Like usually for an apartment complex, once you leave the tour from talking to them, they don't remember you. They put your, that's why they always ask for your information so they can send you automated emails and they'll check up on you. They'll probably give you a, they'll put in their calendar to give you a call in a week to see if you're still interested. Other than that, they don't be thinking about anything. When it comes to for rent by owner, they remember, you know what I'm saying? And they'll look at you like I, my first place where, that I was renting it was an issue because we were young. Um, me and my girlfriend at the time, we got the place together. We were young. I was, what, 20? So she was, what, 22? And they took advantage of that. They was like, oh, they're young. So they tried to bamboozle us with a whole bunch of stuff. But little do they know, honey, <laughs> we ain't no dummies over here, boo. Like, what's tea? What's this? Yeah, make it make sense, please. Thank you. Like, and so it is like with that, with the for rent by owner, like sometimes they can be very shisty. Sometimes they can be very, it could be a negative experience very, very quickly. So just make sure that you, you're doing what you need to do in order to not be in any type of messed up situations. Okay. So that is all that I have right now. If you think of anything that you think I probably missed, or if you have any questions at all about anything that I went over, please comment down below. I love to interact with you all. I would love to answer any questions that you all have. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye.